Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 810, entitled Crashing Your Lathe, or better yet, How Not to Crash Your Lathe. So let me show you a few things about several different brands of lathes that are, have been designed into them to prevent you from crashing the machine and damaging it. First, let me tell you what I mean by crashing the lathe when you're in power feed, and in this case it's longitudinal feed, and you are not attentive, or you walk away from the machine, or you get distracted, and you have the power feed on through the clutch here, you can very well run the tool, or the tool holder, or the compound into the chuck, or into the work, and do serious damage and by damage I mean you're probably going to strip something inside the apron here or at the very least strip one of the gears back here the weakest tooth the weakest gear and that's what will happen and it can be catastrophic and expensive if you have a model C South Bend 9 inch it has an apron like this and it does not have the clutch it just has a half nut lever that we use for longitudinal feeding there is no cross feed again I've said that over and over but if you are using a Model C with the half nut lever and you crash it you will do serious damage because this is a positive drive here a nut and a screw however if you own a Model A or B use the clutch here for your power feed for both cross feed and longitudinal and a clutch can slip to a certain extent and it also depends on how tight you have turned the clutch knob when you engage the feed but there are plates in there just like my 51 Buick and it can slip and that might be your weak point that protects the rest of the machine if you are using power cross feed and feeding away from you at some point the screw runs off of the brass nut and nothing more will happen there will be no damage and then to re-engage it you need to pull back on the cross slide and the nut and screw will re-engage now some machines have that same protection when you come to the end feeding toward you this machine does not seem to have that but let me show you a few other machines let's step down into the other shop and see how Atlas Craftsman and how clausing protect their machines from a crash okay we're at the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and notice when I feed the cross feed out at some point it becomes disconnected from the screw that would protect you greatly when you are feeding under power you're never going to be feeding this far out but if you do all of a sudden it also becomes disconnected and look at the way the crossfade screw is designed and constructed such that there is a unthreaded portion right here and that's what happens when the nut comes off of the screw it enters this unthreaded portion that will protect you this craftsman lathe is what we call a late model it was made in 1976 and I'm not sure when Atlas employed this little clutch here on the end of the lead screw or should I say the beginning so that if you crash the lathe under longitudinal power feed this clutch at some point will slip and it can be adjusted to vary that amount but that is factory set now what did they do before the 70s when they came up with this brilliant idea now I'm still talking about the same Atlas late model lathe here notice how robustly made this bearing is here on the end of the lead screw near the tailstock end so when we're under power feed there's tremendous pressure of the lead screw up against this bearing that's not going to give and that's why they put the clutch on the other end but on older model craftsman atlas lays they didn't use this bearing they used this zamek bearing which is relatively delicate it is sacrificial it is consumable if somebody crashes the lathe this will break at some point because it really is very thin right here that would protect the lathe 
the lead screw would be forced this way a little bit and you would hear a terrible noise and you would turn the machine off. So what would you do then? You'd go down to Sears and Sawbuck and order a new one of these. Maybe they're still available from Clausing. They probably are because they are sacrificial. And if you have Atlas lathes in a high school shop, you have six Atlas Craftsman lathes, you would buy these by the gross. You're still looking at the Atlas Craftsman lathe, but at the high school I had one or more Sheldon lathes, and they used a fiber gear. I believe it was this one. That's quite a while ago. I don't remember for sure, but the purpose of it was to strip as well. In other words, it was a shear pin or a shear gear, and I do re remember replacing that gear several times, and I always kept a few extras in the storeroom. That was their way of protecting the machine. This is my clausing 12 inch lathe if you're feeding out under power and come to the end of the screw because you're unattentive. Again, the cross light is at the end of the screw and we would have to re-engage it then. Well, what about automatic feed in the longitudinal direction, left to right? You can see over here that clausing used, again, almost an incredibly robust bearing on the end of the lead screw. So what they've done on the Clausing and the Logan and probably many other makes, they use a shear pin right here. Let me zoom in on that. So if you crash the lathe, this brass or aluminum pin will shear, just like an old Evinrude Johnson motor from the 50s. When this machine was in the high school shop, I used to carry in my apron pocket some extra shear pins. They sold them, but I ended up using aluminum uh, welding rod, and that sheared so easily, even though it wasn't a crash, just a heavy feed, it would shear, so eventually I had to switch to soft brass. A word to the wise, never leave your lathe running unattended. Do not go to the bathroom while you're in the middle of a cut. Hope this little video helped you to be careful in your lathe so you do not damage it with a crash and the various methods that the manufacturers use to help prevent that. So long for now.